Okay, we gotta play with some great urgency and some great energy. We gotta decide that's how we're gonna be all year. That's who we are. To have fun playing this sport, you gotta play really hard. You have to be together, you gotta be intertwined, and the great teams do that. Let's be one of those teams. Let's go. Northwestern women's basketball on the air from Welsh Ryan Arena on this Black Friday. The Wildcats take on the 16th ranked Gators of Florida. Jerry will walk slowly into the front court, past the left wing. Rhodey's going to trigger a left wing three. She hits it. And Rhodey, the three point specialist, knocks it down. Coffee takes a couple dribbles, goes inside, finishes with a floater. Deary looking to get behind everybody. It's Coffee, collects, hesitates, goes up left handed, finishes. 7 0 Northwestern lead. Straight away, Amanda Butler's going to call timeout. And it's a perfect start for the Wildcats with 7.57 to go in the first quarter. Deary no look past Coffee. Great feed from Deary. Great finish from Coffee. Coffee takes a couple dribbles, goes inside, finishes with a floater. That is Nia Coffee at her finest, driving to the basket, laying it up and in. With Northwestern facing its biggest test in the non-conference, senior Nia Coffey poured in 20 first half points to keep the Cats even with 16th ranked Florida. Great job of talking, you get back in transition, you stop the ball, they maybe have one or two runouts, right? Okay, so you're doing a great job, get excited man, it's a fun game. Okay, play your butt off, you guys are playing hard, so are they, you're just a better team and that will show in the fourth quarter. All right, so just keep playing, keep playing through mistakes. Make sure that, that defensively we don't let down. She'll recollect on the right wing and dribble inside with her dominant left hand. Now for Douglas, Douglas up and in. Coffee, left wing three from Rhodey is good! You mentioned in the pregame, Zach, how big of a game this would be for Northwestern. You don't know how many RPI top 50 or even top 25 wins you could get a crack at. This is one for Northwestern and they have been around all game. Coffee, great pass to Shine who finishes. Cats within two once again. Douglas in defense, it goes up, it's in. Florida's within one. Douglas inside with the left hand, lobs it up, off glass, it goes! Warren Douglas puts the Cats up four. Cersei playing defense on Deary. Deary inside, top of the key, Deary right handed left, squeezes in! Cats by six. Douglas will inbound for Northwestern, she just bounces it into Rhodey. The second stick off and Northwestern has upset Florida 73 to 68. Just glued together tonight. It's a great job. Great finish. Great fourth quarter. You got five stops in a row when you had to. You made them take bad shots. You did a great job not turning the ball over against their traps in the second half. And you got the shots you wanted. You did a great job. You should be really proud. Cats, one, two, three. Yes! Now in his ninth season in Evanston, Joe McEwen has Northwestern back in the national spotlight as a perennial postseason contender. When I took the job was seeing the potential and knowing that it was going to take some time. I think the biggest thing that I really looked at was where can we be down the road, you know. Uh, short term we knew we had to build a foundation, long term, you know, could we be consistently good in the Big Ten. With more than 650 career wins, McEwen's knowledge and experience carries over to his players. He is one of the great basketball minds, I would say. He knows the game very well. And when you just sit down and talk to him, it makes a lot of sense. I've learned a lot from him from allowing me just to play through some things and just trying to figure out what type of player I am on the court. Well, on offense, I've given players a lot of freedom. I think we've been successful doing that, that you know, you can dig in defensively, be part of a great, a great team. And on offense, you know, to, to, to be free, not worry whether you're gonna make or miss. That philosophy came together at last year's Big Ten Tournament. The Wildcats entered as the 12th seed, but made a memorable run all the way to the semifinals. This has been a competitive one, and back and forth, Ashley Deary squeezing herself in for two. Bowman who goes for two in the block. Amber Jamison with the block to prevent Wisconsin from tying it. And that'll do it. Northwestern survives in overtime. Northwestern in Minnesota, the last time these two teams met, it was epic. 
kick out to Inman for three. Bring up another one for Kristen Inman. Here's Coffey to Inman on the transition. Inman and one. 84 to 74. The heart keeps ticking for the Cats and Joe McEwen. Cody trying to answer the three. Coffey with the offensive board. Nia Coffey with the contact, the bucket, and the foul. Again on the deck to save a possession. McBride to the other end of the floor. That's rejected by Nia Coffey. Goes baseline. The pull-up good for Kristen Inman. And the Cinderella story of the 12 seed continues. Four games in four days eventually caught up with the Cats as their Cinderella run came to an end at the hands of top-seeded Maryland. We just switched from the Big Ten season. We just took advantage of that um, opportunity, and we just went out there and we just played together. We tried to have fun, which we did, and we just competed. I think one thing about Nia that, that I really enjoy is she's very humble. She really wants to win. You know, she wants she wants her teammates to succeed. So she tries to do everything in her power for that to happen. The thing that she does that really complements her talent is she plays so hard. And, you know, there's never a let up. She only has one speed. They give Coffee another touch. Coffee again with that step back move. She's got that move down. And she is feeling it. Coffee again. Coffee has taken over this game in the final few minutes. Mia Coffee. Ashley Deary, she's so quick physically that, you know, it's just really hard for people to play against her. And now she's learned how to play off the ball, which is a big thing. She's really, you know, a tremendous defensive weapon because she anticipates so well. Inman is like a silent killer. Her pull-up is deadly. She comes in, she's real smooth with her game, knocks down shots, gets rebounds, can play defense. She can really do it all. She's very quiet about her business, gets it done. She's not worried about fanfare, how many points I score. She just wants to be part of something special. Not everything is quiet about Kristen Inman. You know, I just really didn't like the boring colored socks. You know, I'm not a fan of white or black, you know, just those basic colors, and I really wanted to just be different. It's not just her socks that set Idman apart. She also already has a job lined up for after graduation. I've accepted a position with Aon Hewitt uh, in Orlando, Florida. It's just really exciting. It gives me something to kind of like look forward to and transition out of basketball with. But you know, I'm just trying to stay focused on the present and let the future just happen as it comes. But the one thing her and I talk about a lot is just enjoy your senior year. You know, you've gotten a lot of things out of the way. Just go out and play and have fun. It's kind of my last go around and it's, you know, it's bittersweet, but it's something like me, Nia, Ashley, you know, Tuttle and Lauren, we've all kind of like taken that on as, you know, this is the last time we'll be in a Wildcat uniform. We want to make the most out of this year and, you know, make it special not only for us, but for the, for the young ones under us. An 11-2 record at the non-conference has the Wildcats prime for another big year, but the path to March is made or broken in Big Ten play. For Northwestern, that started with a road trip to Nebraska. To lighten the pressure of the conference opener, Joe McEwen pits his team versus the coaches in a shooting competition. Two. Yeah. My team ran out of gas. We can't get back to the line to get a shot. <laughs> Five. That's a look at the feet. We got five. You guys have turned half the time. You've got to be in great defensive position tonight. You can't play sideways. You can't close out sideways. You can't try to block every shot. You've got to be really solid. Okay? And you've got to talk to each other. That's what great teams do. So this is your first conference game. We've talked a lot about the league. Okay, here's some things. When, when we're really good, we're really good. We've had sightings of what we did in the past, and we've had sightings of what we can do in the future. Right now, we have to make the choice. What team do we want to be? Coffee right wing three is up. Coffee right wing three is good. The Cats started slow, letting Nebraska get out in front 
12 to 5. All right, hey, we're fine. Run your offense. Run your offense. Coffee on the right corner. She'll trigger another three. It goes. Mia Coffee's got four threes. Early on in this one. Coffee, top of the key, spins past Havers, down low, great finish, Nia Coffee. She's got 15 so far. There's still 6.45 to go in the first half. Once again, it was Nia Coffey putting the Cats on her back. 15 first half points gave Northwestern a two point halftime lead. Sin Core on the left wing for Nebraska. Now to Cassio Jensen. She'll trigger a set three. It goes. Cassio Jensen gives Nebraska a 44 41 lead. Freshman Abby Scheid and senior Lauren Douglas lead the Cats on a 7-0 run, close out the third quarter. Here comes Ashley Deere, great pass, Coffee takes a dribble through contact, yes, Mia Coffey, A1! Right wing for Coffey working on Shepard, spin move, Coffey met by a double, great pass, Rody finishes, great pass, Mia Coffey, Lydia Rody got the layup to go, Northwestern's lead is back to six. Nebraska kept fighting to keep the score close, but the Wildcats refused to relinquish their lead. 62-58, the Northwestern is 1-0 in the Big Ten. Great job. Way to stand. There you go, in this league, survive in advance. 